Are you tired of stable diffusion failing to place objects where you want? Well, not anymore. In this video I will show you a game-changing tool that will revolutionize the way you compose images. It's called Regional Prompter. This tool allows you to define specific regions within your image. I will explain the settings shortly, but first let's give it a try. This works with both SDXL and SD1.5. We'll be using the DPM++ 2M sampling method and Keras for schedule type with 30 sampling steps. Since I'm using SDXL, let's set the resolution to 1024 by 1024. We've divided the image into two equal parts. You need to adjust the resolution here only if you change the aspect ratio. Don't forget to activate the tool and check use common prompt. Let's create an image featuring a werewolf and a vampire. Break means we have finished with that section. We'll render eight images. As you can see, the werewolf is almost always on the left side and the vampire on the right. To demonstrate its effectiveness, I rendered again without the regional prompt plugin. In those images, we often either have the werewolf or the vampire and occasionally both. Also, we can see various styles, so let's refine this by checking the use base prompt box. The order now follows common prompt, base prompt and then the individual regions. I want a more photorealistic style, so I will add this to the base prompt and adjust the negative prompt accordingly. Let's render again. The results are in a much more consistent style across our renders. Time to get more complex by adding another row for full moon. Here's how you do it. You can always press the visualize button to preview your changes. We've now entered 2D mode. This is important to know. The first number after a semicolon represents the aspect ratio of the row, while the following numbers affect the columns. I change it to 3. This means the image now has 1 plus 3 parts. The top row gets 1 part and the bottom row gets 3. Instead of using break, you can copy and paste the created template. Remember, the prompt always goes before the template element. Although I usually avoid using high-res fix, I will make an exception here to improve the test results. We stick with 30 steps and your favorite upscaler. That's denoising to a value between 0.3 and 0.45. Additionally, I am activating after detailer for better faces. If you are unfamiliar with this feature, check out this video first, but make sure to come back. Let's render. Most images have the correct moon placement, though some may not. When using regional prompting, you need to do some cherry picking. This next step will be really mind blowing. A good start is to grab a piece of paper and make a rough sketch. Here we have a window with moonlight, a warlock preparing a ritual, a bookshelf, a ritual altar and a familiar pet. Not sure what to put down here. Now let's translate this into our setup. Both rows have three parts, so we start like this. Don't forget, the first number after a semicolon is the row ratio. I want a 16 by 9 image, so I will set the resolution to 1024 by 576. We set the base and common prompt and click visualize. To make the top row twice the size, I change the row ratio to a value of 2. Now the area gets divided into 2 plus 1 parts. We also give this column a value of 2 because we want to give the warlock more room. For the actual resolution we will use 1200 by 672. Some SDXL models can handle this. I copy this template and paste it here, just like before. You can find the divide ratios, LoRa's checkpoints as well as the images and prompts on my Patreon for free. We use a human warlock preparing a magical spell on his altar, tempest magic in his hideout. Tempest magic is from one of the LoRa's I'm using. For my render, I've used some LoRa's in the base prompt. To add more details, a bunch of creativity and, as mentioned, the tempest magic LoRa. The rest should be self-explanatory. Here's our amazing end result. Let me show you the workflow behind it. First I send the image over to the image to image tab. 
Here I set the resize factor to 1.5 and the denoising strength to 0.4. For better facial details, I'm utilizing after detailer again. Press Ctrl and Enter. This looks great. Next, I send the image over to the Extras tab where you can upscale it using your favorite upscaler. For SDXL, I use the 4X LSDIR Plus upscaler. For 1.5, I'm using 4X Ultra Sharp. Now let's take our work to an even more professional level by combining it with ControlNet. Let's say I prefer the body position from an earlier render. First, save your current image and the image with the desired pose. You can basically use any image for the pose. I use GIMP instead of Photoshop because it's free. Load the old image, then the desired pose as a layer. Reduce the opacity to see where everything aligns. Use the transform tool to adjust the size and position so that ControlNet generates the person accurately. Hide the layer with the old image before saving. Do not crop it. There are a lot of control and open pose models for SDXL. These here work best for me. Pick one and place them in the control net models folder. To use it, we go back to our text to image tab. And down here under control net, we enable it. You can find my control net tutorials here if you need some refresher. Then we click open pose and it should automatically select the preprocessor and the model. Instead of using open pose full, we use DW open pose full. And now we render. Normally you would generate a completely new image, but I wanted to keep as much of the old image. So, so after a lot of experimentation, I came up with these weird control net start and end step values. For you, the default settings should be fine. To preserve more of the original image, you could activate another control net unit, but that would be go out of scope with this tutorial. Another fantastic use case for the regional prompter is prompt spilling. I'll explain in a bit what it means. Let's create a group of heroes here. A female barbarian with red hair, a male elven archer with blonde hair, a female magician with blue hair, and a male rogue with black hair. Without the regional prompter, the classes, races and hair colors all are mixed up. Now let's try the same setup with regional prompter. We split the image in vertical parts and then we wrap our prompt around the template. The results may not be perfect, but it sticks much better to our prompt thanks to the regional prompter. The installation is easy. Just go to the extensions tab, click available, load from and type regional prompter and click on install. Then switch to the install tab, check for updates, apply and restart. You're ready to go. There are other tools available for regional prompting. Show this video some love by giving it a thumbs up and leaving a heartfelt comment so I know you want more content on regional prompting. To improve on your stable diffusion skills, I suggest you watch this video next.